Aloha, friends and family. Welcome back to the reading of our cosmic origin. Picking it up in chapter 6. All universes and creations operate according to universal laws and are governed by multiple celestial, etheric, and material administrations or councils of light that has been set up by the great Godhead, primal source of all creation. That's the title of chapter six. <laughs> Since we are now familiar with a higher understanding of cosmology and the different levels of its expression, we can now begin to understand just how there have been planetary governments in our third dimensional world. There have also been cosmic celestial governments in the higher realms, dimensions, which is in fact more effective than those governments in our third dimensional world. In fact, these cosmic celestial councils are multi-leveled operating from the always existing realms of the mother central spheres, which is one. Its celestial organization is manifested on all levels of the cosmos down to the many organized universes and their galactic domains. For the physical universes which occupy most of the material realms, including some of the 90% of the dark matter, there have been established divine orders at the center of all galaxies validating the central sun theory, as is the case with everything in the grand central spheres, or motherverse. <clears throat> Therefore, all organized galaxies that are part of the grand cosmic organization of the prime creator are being governed from the great central sun where the galactic council of guardianship resides. From the great central sun of all galaxies, the great councils of light expand their protection to all the billions of solar systems by establishing smaller councils of light that oversee constellations multiple solar systems down to planetary systems. <clears throat> Everything in existence, whether it is in a state of material, spirit, or physical embodiment, is governed and controlled by the great Godhead of the Paradise Trinity. It is the first source and center which acts as the great council control center of cosmic DNA programmer in which everything follows. <clears throat> that is why the Godhead, as supreme absolute, is forever pulsating its light source to all its creation, initiating its divine order in which the cosmos expands. This way, everything down to the material creations would dance to the tune of our universal architect, The great cosmic celestial councils, <clears throat> as revealed, is manifold because it encompasses all dimensions, all realms, all realities, and all levels of existence. At the highest levels, it is one great functioning vehicle that operates in harmony at every level, down to the planetary spiritual councils because it is all driven by the same universal principles. For example, it is the structure in which the great universal architect is able to experience and administrate to all of his, her creation all the way down to a, down to the planetary worlds in the material realms in a way a president and a corporation is able to administer his organization by setting up different men to act on his behalf all the way down to the manager of the store. Now it is important to know that unlike 
a closed hierarchy that resembles that of a dictatorship, the cosmic celestial hierarchy was designed for all its creation, including all beings, to ascend and reach higher and greater levels. That is the difference between a closed dictatorial hierarchy and one that is based on the equality of all in the different levels or planes of existence. As mentioned in the previous chapter, the highest celestial order of existence is known as the Eternal of Days, which governs and controls all operations of the Grand Central Eternal Spheres and its nucleus in the Isle of Paradise. <clears throat> Together and acting as one body, the Paradise Trinity acts as the core nucleus to all existing hierarchies, councils of all universes with the great omnivore. <clears throat> omnivore metaverse by setting up the cosmic archetypal blueprint of the Holy, Tr Holy Trinity for all heads of councils to follow. In fact, every hierarchy or celestial administration or council is an exact replica of its previous one and acts in unison as if it were the previous hierarchy governing that realm. So in that regard, we may say that the Isle of Paradise is the core body of the Eternal of Days the first celestial administration that has always existed. Following the rule of the Eternal of Days comes the Order of the Ancient of Days. The Order of the Ancient of Days is administered by the Seven Master Spirits, or the Seven Mighty Elohim, as revealed in the Bible. Each Master Spirit makes up the core of the Order of the Ancient of Days, who represent the order of eternal of days at the etheric at the etheric super universe level also it is important to understand that each master spirit is one seventh of the godhead and therefore each one inherits the same cosmic duties and attributes of the first source and center as if each master spirit was the great Godhead, providing even further proof of our holistic existence. <clears throat> Therefore, each Supreme Master Spirit acts as an exact replica of the Supreme Deity Source and administrates its segment super-universe domain as if it were the great architect God the Absolute, the one-fold or threefold. Perhaps each Master Spirit is a holistic representation of Prime Creator Source on seven distinct levels. In this case, it goes from God the Threefold to God the Sevenfold, as each Master Spirit with his own Trinity continues the great divine plan that originated with the Supreme Creator at the center of our always existing central spheres. Therefore, from the moment of the Great Descend, the Great Divine Plan was meant to reach every level of existence or kingdom down to the lower dust worlds, where it was intended to culminate in our times today as our planet ascends into higher dimensions, or heaven on earth. In light of this, it is important for the human kingdom, us, to represent and anchor the great divine plan of divinity into the lower dimensions in order to bring the kingdom of eternal light to the lower regions as planned in the higher spheres. The whole purpose of our collective celestial descent into matter was so that we light beings could anchor the living light of our Creator into the lower regions as each and every single one of us carries the entire essence of the Creator Source in the lower dimensions. 
Also, within the establishment of the celestial administrations of light, there are innumerable celestial personalities that are assisting the great cosmic divine plan without going through the process of incarnating into lower dimensional vehicles. It is believed that there are multiple orders of seraphim in the cosmos. At this point, we may begin to conceive the existence of the many cosmic, archangelic, and angelic beings and the multiple levels of aspects of their service. The highest level of known angels is known as the seraphim, who are considered the highest order of servers, perhaps serving within the orders of the eternal and ancient of days. <clears throat> we also have the Sekonathim, the Seraphim, and the Terra Teraphim, the Ophanium. The list goes on. Just as there are many levels of existence, there are also various levels of angelic services all working together to bring about the plans of the celestial architect, prime creator. It is important to also understand that all supernephim, supernephim and seraphim are functionaries of the second celestial order of days, the ancient of days. In truth, it is important to distinguish between the two categories of descending light beings. According to the higher knowledge, it is revealed that the original beings became known as children and offspring of the Paradise Trinity, the great family of light, the forerunners of all human ancestors. However, not all descending light beings partake in the incarnational process. Some, in fact, remain in the etheric realms in order to assist those of us who might have forgotten unity consciousness when we so chose to participate in the incarnation process of encasing in a physical form. Therefore, the supernephim, seraphim, and sakonephim, as well as the high trinity celestial personalities, were designed to assist us, the descending sons and daughters of light, involved in the involution or incarnational process, those of us that did incarnate in the material realm are known as free will descending light beings. Those that didn't incarnate gave up their free will to serve our Creator as guardians and servants of the many realms. There are those who watch and there are those who experience. Nevertheless, whether we incarnate or operate from the higher spheres, we are all children of light that descend from the great grand celestial spheres into lower realms or worlds of ether and congealed energy matter and are all working together for the greater good of all that is. Equally important to understand is that at each level of existence, each creator logos operates with the same creative powers as its parent logos in this case, the great Ancient of Days who resides at the center core of our super universe of Orvaton is known as the great central sun, Supra Universal Logos, in which the main 12 experimental universes spring from evolving out of the 12 great cosmic rays which are gen generated by our super universe creator in Uverse, the capital sphere of Orvaton. Uverse, according to the Urantia revelation, is the core sun and capital headquarters of the entire super universe domain of Orvaton and it is the nucleus producing all circuits and conditions required for the development of our super universe segment. Now if we take this further down to the level of material realms, local universes, we may say that our creator son, Michael, is known as one of the twelve logos 
Creator Sons and is the Logos of our local universe domain. Further down, each galaxy and Nebadon has its own Logos correlating to its central administration with its two nucleus central sun in each galactic system. We have a galactic logo or council that administrates the affairs of our galaxy from the central sun. In each galaxy, there are billions of local sun logos, solar systems, with planets revolving around them, not to mention all the trillions of planetary logos that exist in the entire cosmic domain of our central mother spheres. At the planetary level, the logos and physical representation of planets is known as the iron crystal core or the inner sun at the center of all planets. From the bottom up, all planetary logos are in turn working and dancing to the tune of their respective solar logos. In turn, all solar logos dance to the tune of their respective galactic logos <clears throat> who in turn dance to the tune of their respective universal logos who then in turn dance to the tune of its super universe logos who finally dance to the tune of the grand central logos in this case all administrations act in unison and are connected to each other through their central suns through the law of resonance who are of one universal body and core. Now bear in mind that these suns or inner sun of planets are only physical representatives of the actual planetary administrations or spiritual hierarchy who are known as the masters of light. They operate from the 12 dimensions down to the seventh as is as in the case of our planetary spiritual hierarchy of ascending masters or earth angels in this regard all suns and cores inner suns are just focal points of pure energy emission fostering the administration of the cosmic rays which these light beings from the unseen realms use to direct the affairs of any planet or any given star or galactic system. We may conclude that within the domain of our super universe of Orvaton, Lord Jesus in tandem with his other 11 brethren collectively makes up what is known as the Grand Council of Twelve. The Council of Twelve is an existing body of twelve Creator sons, daughters, who work together as a cosmic administration guiding everything towards the divine, upward spiritual evolution of all in the twelve living universes, including all of its galaxies, who are evolving into the image of the higher cosmic evolution, grand, central, eternal spheres. <clears throat> the celestial man command known as the Council of Twelve operates on behalf of the Cosmic Paradise Trinity, the Order of Eternal of Days and the Order of the Ancient of Days of the Super Universe Governments. As mentioned, the first Creator Son in the Twelve Universe System is Lord Jesus, who was the firstborn from our ancient of days, becoming the administrator of the greatest cosmic ray, the first ray known as Artem or Radium Ray. As mentioned in the previous chapter, this ray, under the sonship of the great silver sun, the firstborn of heaven, is the sustainer of the first solar plane which came forward at the emanation of the first major universe creation. This explains why all great Christian mystics and adepts have referred to Jesus as our eldest brother, the firstborn of heaven and the king of all angels. The next overseer and adept of the council of twelve, an adept of the second ray 
is known as Lord Amenha, ruler of the Bamba, yellow ray of sight. Lord Amana is the second born of heaven and is also Lord of the second solar plane. Next in divine birth is Lord Ethereal, who is adept at the third cosmic ray known as the Glonium Ray, controlling the green Christmas power of natural growth. After Lord Ethereal is Lady Maria, the first, the fourth, the fourth born overseer of the universe of women and adept of the sect. S-E-K-H-T solar plane the fourth solar plane controlling the Hakan scarlet ray of mysticism notice that each cosmic ray is characterized by color as in the chakra systems after Lady Maria comes Lord Machumas Machumasi adept of the Granisome Solar Plane, the fifth controlling the golden ray of creativity. Then comes Lord Milia, adept of Corb, indigo ray of cosmic knowledge and Lord of the sixth solar plane. The next Lord serving the cosmic hierarchy of the Council of Twelve is Lord Ahura, controller of the Amethyst Ray of Perfume and serves the Lord of the Seventh Solar Plane. After Lord Ahura comes Lord Rahal, who is adept and keeper of the Nimhium Nimhium Solar Plane, the Eighth. He is Lord of the Lucanic Ray, a.k.a. the Medical Ray, which is the roots of all medical sciences. He is also known as Archangel Raphael in religious lore. After Lord Rahal comes to Lord... Huh... A A H N A H T A H, you pronounce it. Adept and keeper of the <clears throat> Matsum ray of magnetism. This ray is characterized by the deep royal blue color and it deals directly with heat, electricity, and magnetism. The tenth adept of the Great Council of Twelve is Lord Kahana of the tenth solar planet known as the Cranshaw planet that controls the Grihilum ray, a pale blue ray that deals directly with all records and keeps track of everything in all universes. This Lord is known as the Recording Lord and therefore deals also with foresight and is the central pillar for the restoration of the office of the Christ of Eldership at the coming of the Celestial Council of Twelve. He is the overseer and protector of the great Akashic records of all time. The eleventh adept is Lord Azrahil of the 11th solar plane controlling the back solar plane which is dark green ray of art, music, and color. The final adept and member of the Great Council of Twelve is Lord Michael who controls the 12 Clusian solar planes known as the Fachnic ray of power and rulership. These great adepts, the Twelve, 
are the celestial board of directors who operate under the guidance and direction of the great ancient of days our creator mother father of the super universe administration known as Uverse, the core capital of the super universe of Orvaton. Also, the administrative body collectively known as the Council of Twelve, or the Celestial Hierarchy, consisting of twelve major universes, is also known as the Order of the Union of Days, which makes up the third great celestial order stemming from the previous two, Eternal of Days and Ancient of Days. After the order of the Union of Days, the Council of Twelve comes the Universal Council of the Twenty-Four Elders who, according to the Keys of Enoch, Book of Knowledge, surround the Throne of Grace of the Twelve and One. The Council of the Twenty-Four Elders is also known as the Order of the Perfections of Days, as described in the Urantia Revelation which administrates the cosmic rays to all galaxies within all their local universes. Now, according to the Keys of Enoch, this order was set up by a cosmic being operating at the level of the Ancient of Days, who is referred to as Lord Metatron. This cosmic being is also known as the Facilitator and Engineer of the Outer Light or Outer Space Circuits, in the outer realms of the outer space levels and works in tandem with the Council of Twelve as the Ancient of Days. In fact, he is part of the cosmic administration and works directly under Yahweh slash Shekinah, our Ancient of Days, who are our, who are our universal parents within our super universe of Orvaton. After the 24 elders come lesser celestial orders like the Council of 144,000 who operate under the Council of the 24 elders. These lower orders under the Council of 144,000 have been assigned to administrate the lower heavens or material galactic systems on behalf of the higher orders and collectively they are known as the great white sisterhood slash brotherhood in general all these ruling celestial bodies are known as the councils of light or councils of elohim plural for the many light beings and many offices of light in review each major universe was given and co-created by one of the twelve sons and daughters of Yahweh, with Lord Jesus being the firstborn and the main chief architect in providing the purity of unconditional love power for all the universes of universes. It was his atrium ray of silver light that sent the foundation that be, that set the foundation that began the entire 12 major universes and the 12 major solar systems and planes that act as power centers to each major universe as chakras do for our human energy bodies or aura. Therefore, in understanding the spiritual administrations of the universal father mother, the great ancient of days, we must also understand the fall of Lord Samana, who became, who came before Lucifer. As mentioned earlier, the fallen angels disagreed with the plans of the great celestial architect by opposing the expansion of light into the outer realms. According to the restored Yanian manuscript, the battle to oppose the great divine plan didn't take place until the eleven universes of the mechanisms were in progress. It was Lord Samana who was a great son of God, overseer of the third universe of men that fell from grace. The story reveals that Lord Samana fell from his position 
as one of the original 12, and apparently he has been replaced by Lord Franchila Gabriel. As revealed in the Ionian manuscript, this fallen Lord became extremely disturbed when God, who upon seeing two lads experimenting with natural growth in the underground without any solar rays, saw the ugliness of the fungi it produced, thereby declaring for the first time something not of beauty and therefore not of light. According to the Yanian script, this occurred in the third universe of men. Since everything is made up of light or cosmic rays, we can see how all living things, plants, animals, humans, celestials, etc., need to be nourished by the cosmic solar rays, for they are the living light rays from the Creator Source that provides us with nourishing universal life force energy. Apparently, by experimenting with growth with no sunlight, a fungus was born and that apparently didn't go well with our Creator. The lads were reprimanded, reprimanded but this left Samana stained forever. Even though this incident occurred in the third universe of men, it didn't take effect, however, until our Ancient of Days breathed in the eleven universes of mechanism. As a result, it appears that all wars had their origin in the eleventh universe. Prior to the eleventh major universe, all universes from the first to the tenth universe of theology were peaceful and were all well settled in life and light. This means that Lord Michael had to deal with the outbreak from the moment God created the last universal extension in the seventh super universe segment. This incident is what is classified in the Urantia material as the Luciferian Rebellion. The concept of a high-ranking fallen light being is confirmed by all esoteric traditions, including all the great world religions. In Urantia, Lucifer became the leader of a group of fallen seraphim known as the Nunodeks. The Nunodek sun is one of three groups of descending light beings. The highest ranks are the Melchizedek, and then comes the Lananadeks, who operate under the direction of the Melchizedek, and finally the Nananadex, who operate under the direction of the Lananadex. See Urantia material for more info on these three orders of sonship. As revealed by Urantia, not all the Nanandex rebelled, but many of them did. The premise of the Luciferian rebellion was founded on a lie, a lie that Lucifer imprinted on the minds of the weaker angels or light beings. The deception was the belief that Yahweh, the Universal Father, our great Ancient of Days, was not real, and therefore the plan to follow in his footsteps as laid down by his son Lord Michael was not worth working for. This postulation, postulation aborted the ascension plans of all living sentient creatures and beings who were created to evolve in the image of our celestial parents. According to biblical scripture, Lucifer took one-third of the angels as followers. At this point, it is important to understand that everything that occurs in the previous universe translates into the next one. So if fallen Lord Samana began his exploitations in the 11th universe, the universe of mechanism, then Samana's plan could have been translated directly into the last of the universe, the one that was to become the culmination of all 12 living universes. What we do know is that it has been recorded in the Bible that the battle against the forces of darkness has been led by Archangel Michael, 
without mention of the other previous universes. Since the rebellion against our Creator's plan took effect at the beginning of the Twelfth Universe, it was Michael who challenged Lucifer and his legions in favor of God's plan, our Universal Father. For that reason, Michael became overshadowed by God's unlimited power, and so he became the Lord of the Fachnic Ray of Power. An overseer and adept of the twelfth creation, it was Michael's duty to secure the dissension process of man, descending spirit beings, and therefore was given the job and duty to restore the last major universe, completing the grand masterpiece of the super universe of Orbiton. This Fachnic ray is the composition of all the other cosmic rays and its power comes from the point of pure compassion. It is Michael with his Clusian Fachnic ray of power that protects and has been cleansing and restoring our creation, therefore capable of defeating the black non-cosmic ray of Colodon, the dark stinging ray that becomes born at the onset of fallen Lord Samana. For the record, we are part of the universe of compassion, the last of the twelve major creations, and since the great cosmic trinity is seen in everything, we also see that everything is divided in three within this creation. So as we take this, and apply it to the universe we are a part of, we can say that our universe of compassion has an upper celestial region, middle etheric region, and a lower physical region where our earth hangs. We may also say that within this last creation, the biggest out of the twelve, there are sub-universes and local galactic systems that we have come to know as galaxies and clusters of galaxies. As revealed in the Ionian script, there are 12 solar planes in the last major creation, all inherited from the previous major universes. With this in mind, we may say that 12 is the patterned number of our current creation Celestial organization and heavenly administration did not stop there, however. There are lesser orders of days that are serving under the order of Lord Michael in each of the sub-local universal systems and galaxies. Initially, each system was generated by love, willpower, and compassion, as this reflects the characteristics and nature of the last major universe. According to the Urumtia revelation, the Luciferian rebellion only affected what is known as the system of Satanic, which consists of a thousand worlds in which our earth is a part. Yet according to other revelations, the war against the forces of darkness encompassed our entire universe and many galaxies. The Urantia revelation also revealed that there were other rebellions, again, the light pr prior to the Luciferian rebellion. However, it does not mention rebellions in other local universes, as there are about 700,000 organized local universes. Perhaps fallen Lord Saman, Samanas, non-cosmic ray of Colophon set the grounds for certain lower orders of principalities to rebel against our Creator Source in multiple universes. This information was not revealed in the Urantia material, therefore it is my belief that Fallen Lord Samana was the original Luciferian in a chain of many followers or followers that also became rebellious against the living light. 
Apparently the great councils of Creator sons and daughters, the Twelve, agreed with the order of the Ancient of Days. They all joined Michael and agreed that Lord Samana, Lucifer, was not to fully contaminate and plunder all the surrounding local universes and systems pertaining to the last major creation of compassion. So they planned to limit the influence of Samana's scorching black non-cosmic ray from affecting the entire last major universal creation. Therefore, the great order of the Union of Days also known as the Order of Melchizedek, was given the duty of repairing and securing our region known as Nebadon, which is a cluster of multiple galactic systems within the last major creation. However, after defeating fallen Lord Samana from the higher spheres of Nebadon, they extended this order further down, reaching the galactic systems, thus culminating and the great wars in heaven in our local region. Therefore, from the beginning of the Celestial Revolt, the armies of light known as the Celestial Command established themselves at the center of every galactic system within our local universe that had become contaminated by the non-cosmic dark scorching ray of Samana. This high Celestial Command operating under the order of Melchizedek and under the direction of Lord Michael was conceived and so our epic cosmic battle of good and evil was born at which point the forces of light initiated a plan known as the Seal of Paladar. The Seal of Paladar was a celestial covenant established by the descending armies of light that was used to restore the light in every aspect of the contaminated fallen galactic systems. The great universal order of Melchizedek under the leadership of Michael has collectively been known as the host of heaven. According to a higher intelligence that is now coming forward, the order of Melchizedek the Union of Days restored each galaxy, one at a time, beginning with the galaxies closest to Salvington, the headquarters sphere of our local universe of Nebadon, in which our galaxy is a part of. Due to the various galaxies that were affected by the non-cosmic black scorching ray of Kaladan Samana, the restoration has been going on for about 38 million years in Earth time. It is believed that this battle ends in our current time, which marks the end of a grand cosmic cycle. This entire period was classified as the first celestial wars, and they were fought for the control of our entire local universe of Nebadon not to mention the other local universes that joined the rebellion. In review of this segment, following the cosmic rebellion, it was imperative for the cosmic order of Melchizedek, the restorers and repairers of universes, to establish certain galactic commands and councils that would maintain divine order and all of the galactic systems within the periphery of the local universe. According to higher sources, the last of the galaxies to be restored before our own was the galactic system of Andromeda that also happens to be the closest one to our galaxy, the Milky Way. <clears throat> In fact, some believe that the galaxy known as Andromeda has acted as a parent galaxy to our own Milky Way galaxy. Our brethren from Andromeda are among some of the forces of light that have been helping in the ascension process of our galactic system, who according to the higher intelligence is in the process of ascending now. This means that the hosts of Michael have finally arrived and are preparing our planet Earth for the restoration of the office of the Christ or light 
as it exists everywhere in the higher dimensions or heaven. Furthermore, when the time came to send our galaxy, the order of Melchizedek under the direction of Michael set out to establish their settlement of light in the star system known as Sirius. The star system Sirius happens to be the closest star system to our galactic center, our galactic central sun, Hanabkub, Zolkin, Kolob, Apheokas, which is where the original <clears throat> guardians of our galaxy were stationed as indicated in the movie Thor. So by establishing their headquarters in the central sun of our galaxy and its chosen sector Sirius, the guardians of our galaxy were able to harness its power, which is equivalent to the power of billions of suns, and in turn, overall control the fate of our galaxy as described by our cutting edge science. This was a smart move and secured victory for the light forces. It is important to also understand that the entire cleansing has been conducted from the highest levels down to the lower levels within our own galaxy. As to why Sirius occupies the highest vibrations or dimensions in our galaxy. And that also explains, this is just me now, that also explains how with this movie we're watching, where it's pretty much all optics, he just said they removed the bad guys from the top down. So when everybody's saying, or the people that you're hearing are saying, oh, we're just watching a movie, and people like me saying the Biden administration's not even really real, it's, it's a bogus administration trying to represent and play a role for a position in this world that's no longer there. So it's becoming really, really awkward for them, right? Because they no longer have a position in 4 and 5D Earth. But they're still trying to play out those roles and pretend that, the, that, that all that's still really real and going to work and viable when it's not. And we all know it's not. And it's been crumbling for a while now. So back to the book. Therefore, the entire restoration of our galaxy has been one of a gradual process that has taken millions of Earth years, but really about a few days in the eyes of God. In support of this information, according to all esoteric knowledge, it has been confirmed that in the early history of our galaxy, the Sirius star system was where the great divine plan was stationed in order to be carried out through the entire galaxy. According to science, the Sirius star system has been known to be the brightest star in our Milky Way galaxy, its color being lapis blue. This is the color depicting the Clusian solar ray used by Lord Michael to restore light and life into the lower planes of our entire universe. It has also been revealed by the higher knowledge that our origin that the origins of mankind in our galactic time frame began around Sirius, particularly in the star system of Vega in the constellation known as Lyra. It was where Lord Michael planted his seed, his offspring that became known as the original line of all human races, in which the entire early human family originated before we began colonizing other parts of our galaxy. Now bear in mind that currently there is no record of this on Earth yet, but believe me, in the records of other planets and in the records of the great central sun, this information is public galactic knowledge. In addition, it has been revealed in the keys of Enoch 
the book of knowledge, that the office of the Christ, which is the office of the everlasting kingdom of light, or God, was first anchored in Sirius, and so the great plan to restore our galactic system began there. The office of the Christ is another term describing the overall command of the entire celestial administrations that originated with knowledge that the office of the Christ, which is the office of the everlasting kingdom of light or God, was first anchored in Sirius, and so the great plan to restore our galactic system began there. And for some reason it's repeating in the book. I think it's a typo mistake. In summary, the Order of Michael has also been known as the Union of Days and combined with all his brethren, known as the Cosmic Order of Melchizedek. It is this great cosmic brotherhood sisterhood that consists of various celestial orders, all working in tandem with the varied angelic orders who are all collectively called the Great White Brotherhood Sisterhood of the Celestial, Etheric, and Galactic Material Commands. Nonetheless, these great spiritual councils are orders that work simultaneously on the multiple planes and dimensions of the celestial, etheric, and physical planes of all local universes. All these commands are set up on all levels and are organized by the overall command of the Cosmic Order of Melchizedek serving under the guidance and direction of the Order of the Ancient of Days. Now as we descend from refining matter into grosser materiality within our local universe, there exists what is known as the secret knowledge as galactic confederations or federations of planets. These have been developed by the order of Melchizedek to operate in the lower levels of reality within the galactic spheres, which are still realms higher than the third dimension. These galactic confederations have been set up in every galactic system by the celestial councils to protect and serve the many galaxies and star systems. They are known as the galactic peacekeepers, and in all cases, they have protected and served the mandate of Lord Michael for the galactic spheres of the material universes. Therefore, it is my honor to reveal that our planet Earth is being monitored and protected by what is known to some as the Space Command, and recently we got Space Force of the Galactic Federation of Free Worlds or the Galactic Federation of Light. And even though we have no knowledge of them yet, they have always monitored and intervened silently in our world affairs throughout all history. Do remember they exist in a higher wavelength of light or reality. And even though we can't see them, they can see us at times, this higher intelligence has lowered their vibrational range to the third dimension and has allowed being seen by certain people. After all, according to the new scientific evidence, there exist millions of advanced space age cultures, planetary, stellar, and galactic systems known as populations one, two, and three. One way in which these higher evolved beings make themselves known to us is through UFO sightings and crop circles. These are signs that the hosts of heaven or galactic federation <clears throat> are here preparing our planet for the ascension and restoration of the office of Christ as it exists everywhere now throughout our galaxy. If you thought Star Wars was a fantasy make-believe story, well guess again, for there is a forgotten history <clears throat> regarding our connection to the multiple star interplanetary stellar and galactic systems in our own galaxy and beyond. 
Remember, every star system is a sun with encircling planets. There are billions of burning suns alone in our Milky Way galaxy, one of the multiple galaxies and multiple universes. We could say that we have been quarantined and isolated from not only the rest of our galaxy, but from other galaxies as well. However, according to the great galactic prophecy of our Milky Way, the Earth will return to its original galactic status as part of the great restoration that began 38 million years ago by Lord Michael. As for the fallen angels or negative extraterrestrials <clears throat> that intercepted the divine plan in the days of Atlantis, they have finally been dealt with by the Galactic Federa Confederation and now the time to clean up the mess here in our own planet is at hand. In all the religious traditions there is a universal accord depicting a time when our own earth would be restored to its original glory and shine like a jewel in the entire cosmos, states the universal prophecies. And when we return, my friends, we will pick it up in section two, chapter seven, a brief history of our forgotten galactic past. We leave you in the love and the light of our infinite. Creator.